questions. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to show you that we have stamps, in, but uh, we have the contest Wikimedia loves, uh, Wiki loves monuments and Wiki loves folks, folk, and uh, for the winners, we make stamps. So if you want to look at them, you can come and visit me. Hi. <laughs> so I will show the, the stamps we've in charge in our um, Correos company, right? So see you. Thank you. If there are people who've been around the movement for like 18, 20 years, you can be considered a monument and take a picture of yourself and maybe she'll put you on a stamp. Yeah? <laughs> Hi everyone, um, welcome to our workshop, How to Communicate Like a Collaborative Leader. Um, I'm Jan Bart de Vrede, I'm from Wikimedia Netherlands and I'm involved in several capacity building uh, initiatives. And you are, by any chance? Um, I am not the so tall person next to him, so my name is Nada Farra. Uh, on Wikimedia you may find me under the name uh, Nada Karim 2020. And uh, I'm a member of the Leadership Development Working Group. Uh, so I know something about leadership and uh, more about uh, communication skills for uh, leadership. And uh, have a nice time with us. Chino, <laughs> do you want to uh, reintroduce? <laughs> no, no, it's okay. We can continue with this. No, no, Maybe there, there are new people. <laughs> okay. Okay, to the new people here in this room. Hi, I'm Chinu. My username is Chinmay Mishra, and I'm from India. I have been a volunteer for the last seven years and working as a Let's Connect working group member for the last four months. And I'm happy to welcome you all here. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, as you can see, we have uh, an S, and uh, in uh, Wikimedia, we want, uh, our, we need actually our members to not be an S and not make an S of uh, you and me as, I, as your colleague. Uh, and assumptions, uh, actually, when you give uh, an assumption or judgment, you maybe you can be an ass and I have to say sorry for a lot of asses that I have said in a very short time. So now you uh, can uh, join each other in uh, a group of three and uh, uh, each one of you will say three things. Two of them will be facts and one of them will be a lie. And I want to ask Jan to give you an example. So tell me two facts about yourself and the lie. And I will try to figure out what is uh, gonna, the I'm lie. Gonna, I'm going to stick to one lie and one truth. Um, OK. <laughs> so as you know, I'm from the Netherlands. Um, we talked earlier, so we know. Um, so I eat, on average, a stroopwafel once every day. And yeah. the second fact is that I spend most of my youth in Africa Asia and other countries. Okay, so uh, I have seen you eat strawberry waffles, so I suppose yeah, you eat one every day. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably one of the worst tragedies in my life, but because I'm a diabetic, I cannot eat a lot of strawberry waffles. So I've had one small one yesterday, and like the year before that, no strawberry waffles. I have okay. grown up in Sri Lanka and in Kenya. So the assumption there, you Dutch. Gouda, soup and waffle. Fair assumption, but... Yeah. This so, is not a good judgment, <laughs> not a good assumption, but join together and start. Yes, you, you can have make... five minutes for this activity. Yeah, st groups of three, or if you need to, two, and just tell one fact, one lie about yourself and have the other people try and guess. And it'd be nice if you try and play into stereotypes that exist about your culture, about your look, about everything else. So we can sort of trap the other person into it. We're being mean here today. In normal conversations, we'd be aware of this.
Bentley more screaming him back, holding up his hands, warning us to move on. She's gone. That's pretty she's, cool. She's gone. Oh, she's hidden there. We should, we if should you hold the sign behind the pillar, we can't see it. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you were holding it. Sounds like this should be another slide. <laughs> this is the slide, huh? It's like, this is how you dress today, Jan Bart, huh? So, when I leave the house, my wife is not responsible for my dress, but she goes to me like, so this is what you're wearing today? So, that's like you with the slide. So, so, this is the slide we're using today? Okay, I guess so. I guess that's the slide then, I guess. No judgment. <laughs> no assumptions. <laughs> no assumptions. <laughs> no assumptions. No. You better fly by now. You can see it. Thank you. I'm older and more broken bones. And okay. I said diabetic, so you know, can't stand. But, you know, I'll be fine. <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's like I'm dying. I've lost my arm. A diabetic. Yeah, but I'm a woman. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, I'm an older white guy over 50. When is it my turn for privilege? You know, when is it my turn? <laughs> what, like 200 years? Does that count? Really? Sheesh. I'm just still counting. You haven't lost a privilege. I know. You are sharing it. <laughs> and not much of it either. <laughs> exactly. So how do you think it makes me feel when I join Jessica, I say, I'll volunteer, registration, whatever, for Let's Connect sessions. And then she says, do you want to facilitate the session <laughs> rather than the two women from India and Palestine? Like, yeah, that makes me feel like I'm doing a really good job as an older white guy here. Diversity is our anthem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to get a white guy in there because otherwise, you know. When people come in, we need to also integrate them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Chino's doing that job right now, but just keep, keep that in mind. She's like amazing. I was here, I said, there's a guy with her from the board from Beatrice Grand and if I go talk to him now in 10 minutes, later, she says, I'll go get him. She runs up to him and he comes back. You got Patricia from me, you're still my hero. You need to send me that picture. Oh!
Nice. So Beverly, a lot of people turn up. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden it's like yeah. Popular session. Yep. Hmm? All right. Can everybody wrap up a little bit? Yeah. Um, the people in the back, if you feel like sitting at a table, that'd be great. Nice, warm tables close to us. I'm a little bit threatening, but they will disarm me. So, you know, no. I think they're already engaged in that conversation, so they're not. We're telling them to wrap up. Beverly is very strict. We need to go and get them. Okay. Okay, everyone, can we wrap up? Have you discovered each other's worst lies and best? kept secrets now. I'm not going to ask you to share because, you know. Um, so this is the second session in the Let's Connect uh, series of workshops. There no, will you not one this afternoon. We'll do a little promo at the end. Um, Shinu, can you tell me a little bit more about Let's Connect? Oh, yes. Thank you, Jan. So, hello, everyone. My name is Chinu. My username is Chinmay Mishra, once again, to those who are right late, a little bit late. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I'll tell you more about Let's Connect, what it is. So basically, it's a peer learning uh, uh, program uh, based on community requirements, but supported by the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, and we have certain kind of learning statements uh, for now. Uh, the general uh, learning or training uh, pattern we follow is a learning clinic. We call it as learning clinic instead of some sessions. <laughs> uh, we try to identify what are the common uh, thoughts or what are the common requirements people are having. Uh, we have a registration platform. You can check the details on Meta. Let's connect Meta page. You can go and uh, register yourself or you think somebody is in need in terms of any kind of resources or any spot learning um, training. You can suggest somebody to re get registered and uh, we will be helping you with providing that support that you need. So learning clinic is always fun. It is not a strict space where we would uh, expect you to not to make any mistakes, not to bring, uh, ask questions. So it's a fun space. It's open for all and uh, it is good. So thank you for uh, your patience and being participating here. You can find the details on the meta page, how to register. And just in case anybody wants more details, uh, after the session, we can uh, continue with that. Thank you. Over to you. I don't know why this microphone is always at the wrong height when I start to speak. It's weird. <laughs> um, so this is our agenda for today. We have the next uh, one hour, 45 minutes. Um, then we'll let you out for lunch. Um, so glad if, uh, that you spent the time with us just to 
get yourself uh, in a better position to communicate with other leaders or other people within the movement. And we're going to go into the why, why we're here, then talk about our case study, which uh, we use in several different uh, ways to illustrate what we're trying to explain. And we're going to go into uh, two exercises with you in needs versus strategy and requests versus demands. Um, why are we here today? You. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, before we jump into like you know uh, the clinic going forward, we need to understand what are the outcomes that you as a participants can expect from the session. So you can be introduced to new skills, you can identify your hidden strengths and hidden supports that you can extend to other people. Um, plus, you can know what are the leadership qualities required, basically, to be in such a vast moment, like Wikimedia moment, where like a lot of threats attached to it when you are working in a community, be it like a strong opinionated, uh, opinionated or uh, decision-making skills expert or something like that, because a lot of times we have to face certain kind of time-crunching uh, situation where we have to take immediate actions. So this clinic, by the end of this clinic, at least you will be aware of what are the strategies you can take forward, what are the understanding that you can get from different approaches, whether it's a need, it's a request, it's a command, somebody is hesitating to pull, put their request to you. So you will be able to identify all those things. At least that's the best understanding we can get. Yeah, so the idea is we're using uh, the concept of nonviolent communication. On the second to last sheet, we will have some more links for you if you want to get more into this. But the principles are actually quite simple. So and actually, um, there are some podcasts here which Beverly from the foundation is sent to me, which are like really short, explaining all the concepts. You, you're done in five podcasts of 10, 15 minutes. Um, but we're focusing on just two things today. But the idea is, oh, sorry, I need to go back. The idea basically is that rather than communicate what we think should happen, we should communicate more about what we need and then come up with the other partner on how we can find ways to achieve that. So we'll go into that a little bit later, but that's the basic premises of, of this means of communication. If we talk about leadership, which we're hoping a lot of you are involved with, with Let's Connect, or you're here, so you're obviously involved in some capacity with the foundation of with, with the movement. Um, and we're assuming that you will want to learn to communicate better. We had a workshop before this on basically how to start a conversation, move to the meat of the conversation, etc. And this is also a workshop where we try and find ways for you as a leader to communicate with other leaders and express um, your needs, but also make sure you uh, understand what the other person is coming from, etc. Can you tell us a little bit more about leadership? Um, in the leadership uh, development uh, working group, we have worked over uh, a year to draft a leadership definition in Wikimedia context. Uh, leadership in Wikimedia is about sharing it's uh, there is no hierarchy here there is no position there's rules there is sharing and sharing is caring so uh, we are uh, groups uh, the uh, we have also set uh, uh, actions qualities and uh, outcomes that would be expected if uh, you have uh, followed the definition of leadership in Wikimedia. And uh, leaders in Wikimedia guide, inspire, and encourage and motivate a group of people to, uh, toward a common and shared goals. And uh, in terms of uh, actions um, and qualities, leaders uh, need to be empathetic and uh, this one of the things that we are aiming to um, to explain through our uh, workshop or clinic as we uh, as let's connect like to call and uh, we um, also said that uh, one of the qualities of leadership is uh, trust building uh, create a supportive environment for others and uh, these qualities are not uh, inherited 
they are not in our genes. You can practice them and you can learn them. They are available for everyone. And um, it's not a matter of position. It's uh, a matter of practice, as I said earlier. This is our definition for uh, leadership in Wikimedia context. Next. So in leadership, there is a set of skills. And as you see, this is, um, you have qualities. Those qualities, if you were able to have some of them, you don't have to have all of them. So you can be empathetic, you can be resilient, the, you can have sustained growth, but uh, you don't have to have every, uh, uh, all of them. But if you have most of them, you can uh, have, they can govern your actions. Those actions will contribute to a supportive environment. You uh, can uh, set a shared goal and guide collaborative decision making. And uh, those uh, actions will yield those outcomes and people will have uh, new ideas, they will feel safe. And we want Wikimedia to be a safe space for everyone to uh, provide their ideas. So, to go to the first step, we can see, like, you know, uh, in our movement, in our community, in our nearby people, we see that they are facing certain kind of problems or challenges, but they hesitate to address that at times. Or if they address it to somebody, there are not so good leaders, those who act on actions on the point when the, there is a time of need, uh, and obviously, uh, there should be another threat attached to it, like, you know, maybe there are some other priorities, there are some other strategies that they can move ahead with. So to understand the first step, to address or to find that elephant in the room, what is the challenge? What is the need? What is the requirement? We can try to address by this. Uh, as you can see, the elephant in the picture is entering the room. Somebody inside is not aware of it. But the moment they will see it, they'll definitely try to address what is it. Okay, some issue is there. We need to uh, face this or we can see for the possible challenges we have. So, and at times for us in Wikimedia moment, it could be challenging for us uh, considering there should be some emotional uh, attachments regarding because people, those who have been in the moment for years, they see their projects as their own babies, not just a project, not just a contribution. And they try to uh, develop it in some other way and moving ahead when they see that there are some challenges, they either kind of uh, be so much aggressive about it how, to just to defend their babies from any uh, problem. And <laughs> I see some smiles in the background, <laughs> people are relating to it. <laughs> so uh, our goal is to address that, to understand that approach and we can move next. That's fine. Um, yeah, so that actually when I was uh, interested in joining the presentation, one of the, my questions was like, why are we doing this? And one of the elephants in the room is what you mentioned, and there's a lot of people apparently in the Let's Connect group mentioned, like they feel it's really hard to connect as a new leader to established people in the, in the movement who already have a position, feel like they might want to protect that position. Whereas if you talk to some of the people who are, have been around for a while, they're like, oh, I'm really interested in new ideas and I want to share new ideas. There's an assumption there that um, for some reason that we can't uh, really work together yet or there's a distance. And one of the things in this workshop will help you cover that distance. So we're going to introduce a workshop to you, which we'll hand out now. We have 20 sets, so I'm hoping it'll be enough. We need you to get in pairs if possible and if it doesn't work out we can you can have a group of three but pairs will be most efficient and the questions here on the screen um we're introducing two people to you i hope you get to know them with small talk they're called lola and anis um you have 15 minutes to discuss the case questions um and then we'll come back for a collaborative sort of debrief 
and see what we've learned or anything else. The people in the back, there's still room here at the table. There's one, he's just by himself doing the case. That can't work for some reason. I don't know how you can reflect with yourself. You can, but not here, I guess. So if, if somebody would like to move up to this table from the back and be enthusiastic like me. No, <laughs> it's hard. Ah, there we have a volunteer. Thank you, sir. Oh, I'm not going to point out the volunteer because that would be wrong. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for moving up. So feel free. Is there enough cases to go around? Yeah, so if there's not enough, please feel free to join a group of two. So we have groups of three now because we don't have enough printed cases. You need to spend a few minutes reading through the case. It's not a huge lab thing of text, but it's just uh, three slides with pictures. But please prepare them by going through. So if you're in the back and you don't have a, um, a case study, please join a group of two and join that table. Thank you. Yeah. 
Everyone, um, if you've read the case, you can move on to the questions. If you have questions, it's unclear about the case, raise your hand and we'll come and help you out. But feel free to move on to the questions if you haven't done that already. Hmm? If, if I tell you to go chase him, you'll go chase him. So I'm not telling you to chase that guy. <laughs> we have 39 people apparently. And that's like 50, including all my personalities. So, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I can't wear the shirt twice. I can wear it, I'll wear it at the final party. Have you seen the weather here? <laughs> I can have newbie, you can have like a relative newbie. Subset of the newbie. Yes, subset, exactly. Little Venn diagram. Everyone, three more minutes.
So if you hear this camera. Yeah, but that was for practice. Oh, she did? Oh, oh I'm so sorry, I missed that. Oh, wow. I'm crying, I saw it. She should just walk out. You told me to move. Wait, here. Yeah, this is hurting me. <laughs> What's up? The is, these people cannot zoom out the screen to highlight like the bigger whole letters in the pictures. And people those who are sitting in back, not willing to come forward, come to the Okay. Table. So, I took a picture of the questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, shared them. I hope that will help for them. Yeah, well, they, we have one more minute anyway, so. One minute? Yeah. I just said, I just told them like three more minutes. Yeah, we're working. <laughs> you were focused. That's good. All right, everyone. Thank you. I know that the thing with this case is I think it's recognizable for almost everyone in this room. Has been a one of the two sides this argument. <laughs> It's like, wait, I'm an established comedian. What are all these new people doing? And it's all these new people, hey, I'm a new person trying to organize something. Why are they not giving me space? So um, just as a general, and this, we've known this from the last session, it's hard for people to come back and give feedback to the whole group. You don't have to stand up. You can just shout it if you want. Um, the first obvious question is who's right here? So who's, who thinks Lola's right, has arguments? Who thinks Anis is right? Who has another opinion? None. No one is right. Or both are right. Yeah, that was an easy one, right? Wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, gave that away to you. Yeah. The, everyone is always right in their own, like everyone has their own story and it always feels like they're right, obviously. Um, and it's, I think it's, it's important to look beyond the obvious uh, things and see what really is at the, at the heart of, of the argument. And it's also worth uh, seeing what assumptions are being made. Can somebody name some assumptions that are being made in this case by one of the two uh, players? Yeah. I think the boat, the other one, both assume that the other uh, has yeah. the same information and the material. Yeah, so both assume that the other person has to see the problem in the same way that they're seeing the problem because obviously that's how we all work. We, we operate from a certain background. We therefore think, if I've explained this to you, then obviously you must understand because you must have the same background as I do. And obviously we all have different backgrounds. So that's a good one. We all, we all they both assume that the other person views the problem the same way, which and is not the case. the opposite. Sometimes people assume the worst. So, if, for example, Anise might be assuming that Lola has done no background reading, has not looked into, has this been Good point. Did everyone hear that? I'm just going to repeat it. Anise might assume that Lola actually hasn't done a lot of background check, hasn't, uh, hasn't done any homework, and is just out of the fly thinking of, oh, I'm just going to organize something without actually knowing what's involved. A lot of people who are involved in our movement are, have tried to organize things, have learned lessons, and assume that all the new people need to learn those lessons as well, and obviously need to be reminded, and probably haven't done all the homework yet. So it's actually a fair assumption they might one of the two players might assume the worst from the other player. Also good. Another assumption? Yes?
function was the talking in the talk page will be communication. Where is some yeah, interpreted or deliberately Ah, okay. Yes, she actually did not see it. Cool. Thank you. So that's a good one. There's an assumption that um, if someone doesn't respond to the message on the talk page, they're deliberately ignoring you. Uh, whereas the talk page is a medium for a lot of people here, but for other people, there might be other ways to communicate. Yes. Okay. So I also feel that um, they, they both assume that they are right and they've done the needful. You know, uh, Lola Fred, uh, she has communicated an intention and the local community should just understand that she understands that. Okay. So the hand also felt, oh, I've given you the meta page. You've read about our programs. You know what to do. And um, it's a lot of assumptions. And that makes them feel, oh, we've done the needful. So mm -hmm. we just have to move on at that point. Uh, but the, it resulted in a very bad outcome, you know. And uh, it's all assumptions. So mm -hmm. it's problematic. It's a very bad outcome. But I think it happens so much more than we think in our movement. Because I think everyone has a story like this sooner or later. Um, there's also another thing here, which, um, which is like someone's personal situation. Um, it can be as simple as uh, you being grumpy to me because you haven't had lunch yet, or I'm, I'm in a very, actually that would be the other way around, sorry. <laughs> um, or just basically I'm going through a hard time, therefore I'm not uh, able to communicate as much as I would want to. I'm not able to compensate for communication fills because I have a three month deadline for something or whatever. So there's also all kinds of things outside of the case which could also affect someone's behavior. And it's always hard to imagine those, but it's, also, it's probably easier to imagine that these things could exist. Um, one more, maybe, assumption or something else you observe about the case. Raise your hand, the microphone will come to you. There's one hand here. If no one else, oh, we'll do two. Thank you. Yes, also the assumption that they're talking about the same scope. Maybe Lola means uh, magic in the context of card tricks and stage magic, whereas Anise worries that Lola believes in magic and believes that <laughs> she can put a curse on her neighbor or that she can summon fairies, huh. which are two very different topics in the context of the Wikimedia movement and content that will be included in Wikimedia. Nice. We hadn't even thought. We talked this case through several times. This hadn't come up. Great. <laughs> and the finally gentleman over there. So yeah, it uh, seems to me that um, Lola has the assumption that the affiliate is there mostly to assist her in her projects, whereas uh, Anise has the opposite assumption of that Lola has to follow their leadership because they're already the established affiliate. Yeah, I think that's very good. That's actually a, a summary of a lot of these cases as well. Um, one of the underlying things is that there's... Sorry? What do you want to Sorry? What do you want to Some... Did you want to say something? Oh, go for it. No problem. No, thank you. <laughs> Maybe the, the result was not good for both activities, but maybe the reason is not that they superpose just because. I mean, maybe they, if they had joined in a single activity working together, it wouldn't be also not, not very good, mm -hmm. who knows? I mean, it's not, uh, assume, they assume that uh, the, 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 the fact that the results were bad uh, is that they didn't work together or they superpose. I mean, that's another mm -hmm. possibility. <laughs> Coming to the slide now. Um, that's actually a good um, segue in what, to, what I wanted to tell you. Is there's a reason why both Loda and Nisa are acting the way they are. Um, they have needs. They, they want to accomplish something. They want to have that need fulfilled. And the problem is that their need is not being met. Both of them are not happy. And so they're both frustrated. And this leads me to our next topic, which is the difference between needs and strategies. Um, this is one of the two taglines I tried to lure you in with on the Telegram group. Um, so we all have needs. These are things which uh, are basic to us. They're simple things like sustenance, roof over your head, things like that. But they're also more complex things like being recognized or 
um, feeling loved or having meaning in life, um, wondering about what you're doing, if, that's, if that has impact, etc. And these are very basic needs. And actually, on a, on a universal level, we all have these to some degree. It depends. Some find other needs more important. It's, it's, if you don't have food, it's harder to think of other needs. But we all have, this, have a similar basic group of needs. And at the same time, we're wondering, how do we meet these needs? And that's where we come up with strategies. And the key word here is, we come up with strategies. So I, myself, have a certain need. I will therefore think of a strategy to make that need happen. A good example is yesterday, we were preparing the session, and someone said, in our slide deck, can we put our name on every one of the slides so we know who to present which slide? I managed to still mess this up just now, but you never noticed. But I'm like, OK, we can add your name. And then later on, I'm like, oh, wait, why do you want to do that? And she goes, well, because I need to feel prepared. I need to know what I have to prepare for the session. And it gives me a feeling of security that I know that I have to prepare these slides. So the actual need is much different from the strategy. The strategy is, let's put our name on every one of the slides so I know what to do. But the need is, I want to come to the session prepared so that the 40 plus people in the room will not feel like they're not being, they don't have a prepared presentation. So that's a difference there. And that happens a lot, all the time. We all think of our own strategies because we think we're best at formulating our own strategy for the need we have. A simple one is, I'm hungry, so I will go get lunch in one hour. A more complex one is, I need to feel more accomplished. So I think someone needs to recognize my contribution to the movement. I'll organize an event. Regardless of what Anisha is doing, I low-level organize an event and make sure people see what I do and I'm visible. And the other way around, Anisha is saying, I think people should respect the fact that we have an institution which has a grant, which has a schedule, which is, has all these activities which were approved by the foundation, everything else, and we want to make sure that we stick to that schedule. And people need to recognize all the hard work that went into that. So he wants to feel more respected and more recognized for what he already done, has already done. And Lola might want to feel more included in the movement, which apparently is not as welcoming, welcoming to her as she thought it would be. Um, a final example on this is a really basic one, but if you, like for example, we have here, everyone flies here and talks to people, but you can also be lonely here. You can just be like, oh wait, you phone out of your country for the first time, you feel the need for connection, so you go find someone you already know, you call a family member even, but in some way you want to feel included in this group of people or you want to at least have a connection with someone. That's your strategy. For other people, it's a different strategy. They basically go out and see who comes and talks to them and they're like, I'll just wait, I'm okay. And then after a while, people will come up to me, and, but it's a completely different strategy for different people. Okay, so I already went into this a little bit. Um, but there's a conflict, a lot of conflicts arise from the confusion between strategy and needs. If you try and tell people, I want you to do this, then that often leads to an unanswered question of why. Whereas if you try and explain to them, I need this and therefore this would help. That is often a connection people, oh, so no, but then I can also help you think of other ways of making, making your need met. This all sounds very soft and touchy feeling, but it's really essential in communication because you want to make sure that the other person knows what you really need so that the other person can help think with you. We're all smart people in this entire conference. All these people here are people who helped work on different projects, who spend their volunteer time, they all have good intentions. They all want to help each other, yet we manage to miscommunicate so much of the time. Everyone tries their best, everyone tries to communicate in an effective way. Jet lag compared to <laughs> your own bias, your own assumptions, huge cultural differences, they all lead to different communications challenges. And this case is one of those examples, I'm not going to go into it again, but we saw the needs of Anis and Lola might be different, but they're also on a fundamental level, very understandable to the other party. So communicating those needs and thinking about how to take the next step is actually really essential. Finally, so this is a guideline for the exercise we're going to do next. Try and look beyond uh, the, the strategy and try to understand each other's needs. That also means you can actually ask for clarification. Like, 
You want me to do this? Why? What do you really want to achieve? The question behind the question, as some may say. And then you can work together on finding a strategy that works for both of you. Now let's try this. Okay, the tricky part here is we, can, we have to do this in pairs because it only works in pairs, so we need to split up the earlier groups, but we don't have any more paperwork, so that's the good news. But we would like you to split up in a group. Uh, we have an eight-minute exercise. One person spends, I'm being watched by Beverly here if I say this correctly, three minutes explaining a recent conflict or a, a problem they had with another person within the Wikimedia, uh, within our movement. Then the other person will try and give reflection on that and say, so as I see it, you both had this strategy, but behind that you might have had that need. That's five minutes. And then you have a small reflection time of another three minutes. No, we don't. Okay, sorry. My fault. I did it again. Five minutes for the second person to reflect on that and the first person to give like, oh, you got that right or you didn't get that right um, and discuss the reflection the second person gave. So you spend three minutes on discussing a recent conflict or problem you've had. Then you spend five minutes on debriefing that, starting with the second person saying, so I think these were the strategies you both used and I think these were the needs you really had and you can discuss those. Yes, so do that in groups of two and um, that's eight minutes. And then we'll do it the other way around after a debrief. If you have questions, raise your hand. We will find you. No hands, no questions.
Everyone, we've had the first three minutes, so it's time to do the reflection back if you haven't started. Yes. Your lady is back. My lady is back. The person you. Oh, sorry. Person I want. No, you were curious why she left, right? This lady. Oh, that was the other one. Yeah. Oh, the other one. Yeah, yeah, but it's fine. You want me to do it? You can do it. You're fine. And if you don't, if you mine, mine's next, so I can just summarize okay. if I feel that it's good to do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, don't worry about it. When you start, just uh, summarize if you like, yeah. if, if you feel that I missed something. Or missed. Yeah, I can just help you. Okay. Thank you. And I also have a general sentence because I think it's important here within our movement. We also have the receiving part. If there's a lot of people here, maybe you, that any request is viewed as a demand. And you should also recognize that it's not every request. All right, where are we at? We are here. You have the slider, right? I have the answer. I like the fact that just now I moved here to the slide. And then after 10 minutes or 5 minutes of feedback, like, oh, we need to move that slide too. <laughs> that, I noticed that. That's what I said. Like, you know, you focus on that one, I'll slide it for you. I was so annoyed when I, the power save was on. So every time I want to look at my notes, it's like, oh, they're not no, here. I noticed that. That's what I said. Like, you know, focus on one screen, I'll take it. Yeah, but I need those notes. Not yeah. the, there's not, that's why they said yesterday in the speaker's channel, they said, if you want to have your notes, you can't use their presentation because it will never show the notes. Yeah, true. Which is annoying. And it is a fixed screen, like they cannot switch the resolutions. I just asked like you know, that guy to zoom out the questions. They said we cannot do that. No, and so I think this is automatically the same screen. Yes. Which is okay. Yeah, yeah. Is it at oh, 05?
Hello everyone, I hope you had a good first round. I would like to ask you to turn it around and now the second person gives a story of three minutes and the second person um, gets reflected back to you. By the first person you spend five minutes reflecting on what you understood, if the, person, the other person got the interpretation right. So please switch and I will warn you again after three minutes. So spend three minutes explaining your recent incident, problem, challenge with another Wikimedian or another entity within the MOOC. Hi everyone, those were the first three minutes, so if you can spend the next five minutes reflecting on what you heard. I have a feeling everyone's listening to this. But I think, as long as you're having... So it's okay to ignore me, I'm used to that. But as long as you're having the right conversation. So discuss on the case, give feedback, assumptions, needs. <laughs> Thank you. 
today. Can I ask you a question? Did you, just now, when you were presenting a slide, at the same time operate your phone to do something completely different? Somebody called actually, so I rejected. Oh, no, because you were like going on your phone. I was like, what? How do you do that? Oh, I thought you were in Telegram and doing. Oh, I was like, how do you do that? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I rejected the call and put it on silent. Oh, so. it wasn't a judgment. It was just like, I, can't, I I would have been completely distracted. But you just kept on talking. It was like, how did she operate? No, <laughs> I can't do that. I'm not such a great multitasker. So. Okay. Well, you're a developer. Just it's assign cycles to this. Assign cycles to that. See, that is like kind of pocketization, not <laughs> that not work multitasking. Fun. Because you, like, at least I'm not blessed with that capacity. I don't think I anybody is. I yeah. think people claim they are, but but I don't believe that. No, <laughs> <laughs> because it is difficult. For that, you have to have an Einstein brain. <laughs> yeah, 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 true, and and be able to separate. Slides. All right, everyone. Ready to wrap up? Yeah. Attention, attention, attention. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I would stop and don't ignore her. I've tried. It's I, you. You will get the cold eye. So, everyone. Our favorite part, group reflection. What have we all learned? Does anybody want to give some reflection on the conversation? When did you manage to identify a difference between needs or strategy? Do you have examples? Do you have anything you want to highlight to others? We have someone ready with the microphone. I've seen her run earlier today. She's really fast. There is, all the way, you can practice the running. It's all the way in the back. Just Ge the gentleman hand. over there in the back, he was raising his hand. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm Derek, and uh, in my group, I'm with... Uh, my, name is Ga my name is Gan. Kat. Yes. Uh, so uh, in our discussions, uh, I think one of the 
uh, most interesting things that kept uh, coming uh, along is uh, that uh, in many cases, there are so many assumptions uh, and people usually do not cross uh, to the other person's um, lane, if I use that term. Mm -hmm. So if there is an issue, I tend to assume what my colleague is going through and they also tend to assume what I'm going through and in the long run, we keep uh, ourselves in that sky of assumptions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think that, and that is one of the things also, if we see someone else's strategy, we automatically assume their need. And that's why you need to communicate your needs rather than strategy, because strategy means there's all kinds of assumptions. If that person does that, I would do that in that case. So I'm, I'm assuming that you need the same thing, rather be more explicit. Have other people have examples or learnings they want to share? Even the usual suspects is fine. People who want to volunteer. Did you, for example, find a good difference between what you saw as a strategy and then someone else pointed out to you, yeah, but the real need was this? Did you manage to get into that part of the conversation? Tough crowd. The alternative is our singing and you don't want that. <laughs> yes, gentlemen over there, thank you. Oh, also. Hi. Hello. Um, so we talked about a situation where um, I think that people were coming from a good perspective and wanting to do something that is positive and having changed that's positive for the community, for themselves um, or for a group of people. But then sort of through communication and through miscommunication based on assumptions, uh, that whole thing went awry. And I think that's uh, the, two, the two cases that we were talking about were similar in that regard that um, sometimes because we don't talk on the same level about the same things because we misunderstand each other and we don't clear it up. That's how sometimes a lot of uh, frustrations come and then bad communication happens uh, and sometimes happens in public and makes it a lot more difficult then to retract. Um, mm -hmm. That was one of the findings, I think. Cool, thank you. Um, the gentleman with the yellow keyboard and the, then the woman behind her. Uh, thank you. Um, you are discussing about the strategy and the need. A situation where you are applying for the grants or uh, funds on behalf of the rest. And then um, uh, other people feel like uh, they are, you, are, you, have, you have not taken their you know, expectations in consideration. So um, we came up with a solution that uh, perhaps the strategy which was used to gather the information about um, the need was not effective. So we say that maybe the best way is to do maybe needs assessment so that uh, you can actually get to know the needs and um, uh, the priorities because we were like looking at it that sometimes uh, the funds you get might not cater for the, you know, those expectations. So maybe the tool you are going to use you need to ensure that you put the priorities so that is very uh, uh, it can help you maybe even if the funds are not adequate uh, in future you can look at also other needs so that's what we talked about the strategies and the cool thank you yeah I think that is one of the things for example with grant proposals we often uh, confuse the two again we have an outcome we want to produce this and we call that that's what we need to do no, well, that's not a need. There's a reason you want to achieve that. That reason might be you need to be recognized or you need to be contribute, you need to do something meaningful, etc. And coming back to that in your project group before the proposal and thinking about that kind of aspect is also important because then you, you have to work together and maybe make compromises and think about funding. If we have less funding or more funding, what can we do while still meeting those needs? So again, communicating those and not confusing needs with, for example, deliverables um, or what you want to achieve is also a, a very relevant there. Thank you. And then the woman behind you, I think, had her hand raised. I like I just identified someone as the guy with the yellow Hello? board. Hello? Yes. Um, so, yeah, we had a case here um, where it turned out that the other um, party, I would say, um, wasn't able to tell what the needs are. So um, there was um, tried everything 
um, by my um, communication or by my conversation partner, but um, they couldn't say what they wanted. So um, they just were like, yeah, yeah, we will do it differently in the next time. And then they didn't. And then they, oh, we forgot. Okay, next time we will do it differently. And this is like going on and going on and going on. And I think um, when we talk about um, talking about one's needs, we also have to consider that it's also um, something that has to be learned and that has a lot to do with self-esteem and knowing and feeling yourself that you really are um, you are connected to yourself and really know what you need. Because I think it's also a kind of a society, a society thing, what's allowed, what's not allowed. And um, I just um, also in our conversation um, told my um, my, my um, conversation partner that, um, for example, I know a lot of people who are like, oh, do we really have to talk about everything? Oh, you're so complicated. <laughs> I'm not, uh, really not, uh, well, maybe for, uh, but uh, I can't say for sure, but um, uh, yeah, it's just like talking about something and a lot of people try to avoid to doing this. Yeah, that's yeah, I think you're totally I right. I think it's, uh, it's very important. I once had this this person who was trying to help me through something and he was being like a two-year-old. Every time I gave an answer, he goes, why? I'm like, well, because I want to do this, but why? And it gets really annoying and I don't think you should practice it a lot, but it does help the other person get to, why are you taking part in this group? Why do you want to take part in this activity? Why do you feel you want to do this part? Why do you feel you want to be responsible for the funding or why do you feel for example, why do you want to be responsible for the grant proposal? Oh, you feel the need to secure the fact that this is going to be a thorough proposal and that you'll get the grant. You don't feel secure. Other people can do it, but why is that? And it's annoying, but it helps the other person also maybe articulate and go beyond strategies. Um, all right. Thank you all so much. We're going to move on to the next part, which is once you've expressed your needs or you've communicated or they're understood, there's also another interesting part, which is a very, very, very uh, interesting phenomenon within our, within our movement and also within communication in general, is request versus demand. Chinu, would you like to take just through this? Thank you. So considering all the scenarios, what you uh, just shared and what you saw in the case study, we certainly at times fail to understand how a good request is made and what turns out to be a demand on the other hand. So the basic difference can be found, for example, if I ask NADA for some kind of request uh, that NADA, I need certain kind of help and will you be able to assist me in this? So I should be in a position where I am ready to uh, respond it as no, no, I'm not available or I don't have the capacity. I don't have the expertise to entertain that. So that doesn't fall under my scope. So to understand that, I cannot, in a reciprocation, I cannot just say, thanks. <laughs> okay, so we should be uh, in a state where we can uh, be ready uh, with any kind of response we can look to. In the same stage, we cannot be too much demanding that, hey Nada, I asked you for this, but you made it like, you know, a clear no, I'm not happy with this, you are expected to do this. So this. The conversation should not be go in that direction. To understand it better, we can see that how to communicate our needs. So it's always easy to ask for help. I learned in that last session from myself that when you are in need, always speak up and ask for help. Do not just assume that I have a need, people will understand and somebody will come to help. That doesn't happen. So to understand this in a better, we can just go back to the earlier example uh, we just shared in the case study. So for example, if we go to that uh, conversation what Lola and Anis had, if you remember someone, like to be exact, Lola, Lola had a sense of seniority. Uh, he had kind of, he wanted the sense of belonging. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, so Lola was the one who tried to understand what is the sense of belonging that I have certain kind of work accomplishments uh, that needs certain kind of recognition to my contribution and it needs to be highlighted somewhere. And I want that support from my team, the team I'm part of. But in return, Lola also wanted to um, 
sorry, in the other hand, Lola also wanted to uh, run her campaign independently. Where Anis wanted to make sure that they could run it as a you know, group. And considering that factor, it could have been possibly uh, depicted in a place where it would have been a simple request that, hey, can you please check on your timeline? Can we just move it a little bit so that we can do it in a group. You are doing a great work. We really acknowledge your accomplishments. Uh, but is there something we can go to the next step? You can be a campaign organizer to a big global campaign, not just regionally. So when we extend that kind of factors to people, that kind of uh, helps us to understand what are the needs they are expecting for and to make it a clear request. Okay, this is the thing I'm anticipating to be cleared off from my side, and I'll try my level best to deliver on that. With that, we will flow to the next slide, which makes that, what makes a good request? Before we start preparing ourselves to, okay, these are my needs, I am going to convey something to my colleagues, my user group, or my affiliate, or something I know that can be helpful to me. How should we frame it? A a good request should be always concrete and doable. You should not leave people always keep guessing. For example, if I'll say that, Nada, I need help on preparing my presentation. It should be concrete. I should not be like, you know, hey, Nada, we are having a session. I need your help to do this. Do what? So it should be concrete. Uh, then just uh, when you are trying to deliver your needs, you're trying to uh, seek for help, you should be always uh, willing to say, this is what I want, but not what you will not want. So that differentiation should be always there. Plus, as I said in the initial conversation, always learn to say no and to hear no also. If somebody is saying that I'm not available, it's okay, I can manage or else find some other alternative. Or you in the being in the requesting end, you say that, uh, okay, I don't think I can make this uh, happen in time or I can offer you the help which you are looking to. So learn to say no and in the receiving end, uh, be ready to hear no as well. Okay, so to understand what is the important distinction like how we can identify the needs, uh, like the demand and requests. And on the other hand, when a request doesn't get fulfilled, what are the repercussions it can have? What are the long-term impact it can leave with us? If I am making an example to, sorry, I'm making a help request to somebody and he or she is not able to fulfill on that, that kind of leaves me with the request that, okay, I made some kind of request to this person, the person denied, so I cannot go back to the same person again if I am in need, which is not true always. Probably the other person had some other priorities or maybe some other things or he or she does just didn't feel that that is the right space to jump in and to collaborate. So to be uh, more empathetic, more kind, and to be concrete on your thoughts, that's uh, one of the addition we can have. Plus, at times we have seen that certain kind of demands comes with a fear of failure, fear of guilt, out of certain kind of insecurities, out of some unpopularly popular syndromes we have seen over the years in the moment. So eventually we will have to uh, accommodate all those things with certain kind of rewards in return. Maybe we can just sense what are the requirements the person is looking to, what are the understanding we can offer. Those will be helpful for us. Okay, I'll pass it on. Now I know that you had a question. Here, yeah. Uh, here. Could you one quick clarification question? Um, my question is, uh, you were talking about saying no, and let us assume that both parties, they know each other. You are Nada, for example, and she did, uh, she helped you sometime. And uh, now you have the difficulty to say no, although you are convinced that you have to say no because you don't have time, or you don't believe in what she's doing. So how to go in such a situation, like kind of, good practices to say no so nicely that you're still the best friends? 
You can just be open and honest about it that, listen, I have some priorities or I don't think that I'm the right person to help you out of this, but I can offer you this help by connecting it to somebody. Because we have to understand that when a person asks that question, there is an expectation that I am going to help. He or she is like, you know, either uh, they are okay with hearing that no, but there is a sense of receiving the help as well. So if we can do something, then just do it. Or else just simply say it no. It saves a lot of time. It make it doable. Or the other person can just find some other alternative. So just let's not uh, waste our time and uh, spend our energy more on finding a way to say no. <laughs> so let's try, let's like you know, look at the other possible solutions that we can offer. Be it like, you know, me, be it Neda, be it somebody else. So. Yep. I think one of the, I'm, I have to move on, but we'll do, we'll do reflection, thank you. But I think one of the key things is, I think this is probably one of the biggest issues we have in our movement, crazily enough. We have people not being able to ask a request rather than make it sound like a demand. And there's people that also have a really hard time in making the difference to question to being asked them, is this a request or it feels like a demand? And this is one of the reasons